Hey everybody, welcome on into ClayshareCon. I am Jessica Putnam Phillips, the founder of ClayShare and ClayshareCon. And right now I am gonna teach you how to make your very own planter, a hand-built planter. And we are gonna use a shrink ruler right here from Diamond Core Tools because we don't want just any planter, we need a specific size planter. And this is how we're gonna get it. And we're gonna talk about using shrink rulers and we'll talk about this thing called a shrink rule and how important they are in pottery making, very. And then we will hand build a couple planners and they're just gonna be little squares. Um, although you can adapt this to any shape you want, but we're gonna make square planners. All right, hi everybody, welcome in, welcome in, welcome on in. So we have five days of demos, tutorials, and all kinds of awesomeness happening all during ClayshareCon. If you miss any of the live events, everything is being recorded. It will be available for replay afterwards for free. So you don't have to worry about it. If you can't join us live, you can always watch the replays on ClayShare.com. If you want more information about ClayShareCon, go to the ClayShareCon.com website where we have the full schedule, list of the giveaways and promos and sponsors and everything happening during the 2021 ClayShare Con. And that goes through Sunday the 28th, so today's day two. All right, so you guys ready to make some planters? These are, these are really fun. Now, um, you can make square forms by extruding them if you have an extruder, but if you don't, this is a great way to do it. So I'm gonna put, put these guys back, and we're gonna talk about why, why you wanna shrink rule. All right, so uh, for me, I wanna make a planter that will fit the windowsill in the kitchen of my new house. That's a valid thing. You know, you have a place you wanna put a planter to put plants in, and I wanna do a row of them. So I wanna do three planters in a row that fit on my windowsill. So what I did is I measured my windowsill, which is, it's five and a quarter inches, but I'm willing to do five inches so you have a little room. You don't want the planter all the way to the edge, right? So um, I measured it and it's five and a quarter. So I'm going to five inches. So Diamond Core Tools has a shrink ruler. And we're giving two of them away. Are we doing that today? Uh, yeah. Ah, we're doing that today. So Diamond Core Tools has a shrink ruler right here. And when you get the shrink ruler kit, you get the shrink ruler and you get just a regular ruler, but it's a clear one, which is really nice, and it's bendy, which is really nice too. And then they give you the shrink ruler um, instruction sheet. So how to use a shrink ruler. And so what a shrink ruler will do is you can measure something and say, I need it to be five inches when it's finished, right? And then you can go to your shrink ruler, find your clay. Now you need to know how much your clay shrinks for this to work. So they have a scale for 6%, 10%, 12%, and 14%. So you find your scale on here. And if you want a five inch, well, if you put the shrink rule, the shrink rule's five inch, I don't know if you'll be able to see, is right here. But the actual ruler's five inch is back here. So it's almost a half an inch difference. So the clay is gonna shrink almost half an inch. So you need to make it bigger, right? So this right here is a great tool to get things the exact size. Now, um, you might not need it for making something new, but if you're making a mug and you know you want your mug to be three and a half inches in diameter and you're wheel throwing it, your shrink ruler, you'll be able to pick it out and then set your calipers to that measurement. And then every one you throw, it will shrink to three and a half inches once it's completely done. So it's a really great tool to have in the studio so that if you wanna make things a specific size, you can do so. The other thing you can do is say you make a piece, like a lidded jar, and you break the lid. You can measure that finished piece. If you made it and you know what clay you used, you can know how much it'll shrink. You can make a replacement lid. It's possible, completely possible to do. So this is a fabulous thing. Now. Then that's uh, bringing you to the question, how do you know how much your clay shrinks? Well, you have to make a shrink rule. This is the ruler, but you need the rule, which tells you the percentage your clay shrinks. And I have a class on ClayShare that teaches you how to make your very own shrink rule. 
So what you do is you take your clay, basically you roll out a slab, you measure a 10 inch line, you draw a line for that 10 inches, so you start here, make a dot here, draw a straight line that's 10 inches. After it's been glaze fired, so you put this little slab that has its line on it in your bisque fire the next time you do one, but that's not enough. What you do then is you measure it, and you know how much your clay shrinks between wet and bisque fire, then you put it in your next glaze fire, so this has been glaze fired, and you measure again. And now you know how much your clay shrinks. Laguna B mix shrinks, and I write on it 12%. I really don't care how much it shrinks between wet and bisque. I cannot see an application for me and what I do, but other people might. So for me, knowing how much it shrinks overall is great. Some manufacturers will put it on their boxes, how much they shrink, but you should always make one in your own studio because you might not fire to the same temperature they fired to. You might fire a little differently and your shrink rate could be slightly different, right? So make yourself this right here. Make this. And you will be forever thankful. I have them for all the clays I use in the studio. They just hang on the wall. And, and I mean, honestly, I don't need to refer to them much. It's just when it's a clay I haven't used in a while, I grab it out and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that doesn't shrink much. Like my earthenware, I think shrinks seven and a half percent. That's almost half what this shrinks. My porcelain shrinks a bit more. So the shrink ruler has measurements for 6%, 10%, 14%, and 12%. What you do is if your clay shrinks at 11.5%, I would go with the 12. So you go to the nearest one that they have printed on this guide right here. Um, I don't know any clay that really shrinks more than 6%. Uh, if you got a clay that hardly shrinks at all, you're doing great. But most clays shrink um, between 8 to 12% on average. All right, so back to my issue, which can be your issue too. I want a planter that when it's done, it's 5 inches by 5 inches. I actually want to make a bunch, but we're going to start with one. So what do we do? Well, first we have to decide, do we want it to be a rectangle? Do I want it round? I want a square. I want a five by five square. Okay, that's easy enough to do. I'm gonna make a template. And I have some craft foam. I buy my craft foam in these great big sheets. It seems everybody's talking about craft foam lately. I don't know. Just the cool thing. It's the cool thing in clay. It's, it's not new. I mean, craft foam's been around for a long time. I've been using it for a long time, but um, I love that people are discovering it. We're going to switch to the overhead on camera three so that you all can see. So shrink ruler tells me that 12% is this blue line here. So this is already factored in. So if I want a finished piece that's five inches, when we get our regular ruler out and we line that up, a five inch is, is actually a wet piece that's five and a half, five and six eights. <laughs> but I'm not even going to really worry about that. I'm just going to use the shrink ruler to make my template because it's going to be right. And I can write on my template, finish size five by five. Right? So let's go ahead. And I'm going to use this bottom corner because this is already squared. So I don't have to worry about getting that bit correct. So let's line up our shrink ruler. Get my pen out. I'm just going to use a regular old ballpoint pen. If you have a Sharpie, they work great too. So I'm going to make a little tick mark. And I'm going to make three because, you know, when we're always trying to find a straight line, we need three. And then you draw through the three of them. And if one of them is way off, you know you messed up. So you just got to go back and remeasure. So that's our first one. And we're going to draw our straight line. How to draw a straight line. It's a valuable tool. So there's our first line. And then we're going to go to the side here. And if you don't make craft foam templates, you really should. You know, they're, they're inexpensive. They last for almost ever. And there's so many possibilities.
Okay, so now we're going to line up the shrink ruler. So, I have my shape. So this is a square planter template. I write on everything. Fired size, 5 inch. So I'll know that I've got a 5 inch square, right? And we'll cut. Now, if you don't cut straight along your line, I mean, it'll work out. It's just clay, right? It can be a little wibbly wobbly. No one's going to know this. So that's our bottom, but we have another decision, our sides. How big do you want your side to be? Hmm, that's a question. And you have to consider the thickness of your wall. How thick is your clay? Well, my clay is a quarter of an inch thick. So if I'm making a five inch diameter, well, five by five square. Well, it's a little different, right? We have to come back a quarter of an inch on each side, lining up. So we, we have to make these accommodations. And also how high do you want it? A five inch tall planter would be too tall. I would want a finished size four inch. And just for ease of making, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make it till it's a quarter of an inch shy from the edge right, a quarter of inch short, so that I'll just have a little quarter inch gap. Does that make sense? I hope it did. So that means instead of going to five inch, I'm going to go to four and three quarters for my length of my walls, and then my height is going to be to four inch on the shrink ruler. It makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. So let's go ahead and cut our height first, so this can come out of here. And remember, I wanted to make it a four inch tall. You can do three inch. I mean, really, uh, I like this height. Let's see what we need it to be. So this height is, okay, so this is three inches. So maybe we make it three inches tall because that's a nice deep planter and I'm going to put succulents in here. So I think three inches works. So we won't make a four inch wall, we'll make a three inch wall. And the reason I don't have these pre-made, I, I do have them. I don't, and the reason I'm not posing all these questions and ideas is because I want you to be thinking too as we're doing this. So using the shrink rule, I'm challenging you. We're gonna mark it at three inches because we want a finished size to three inch. We'll make three marks, right? Now, I have rolled out my clay already. So if you need to make these, you know, you should make them ahead of time. But you do want to roll your clay out. My line's a little off. And let it set for about 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You want your clay to be stiff enough because we're going to make these slabs that need to hold themselves up. And so I said it was going to be four and a quarter long. So that brings us to here. So we have to work first, then we get to play, right? Make our templates first, and then once you have a template made, it's, it, I have templates that are near 10 years old. So this is planter sidewall. So let's cut this, on, and I'll write that on here. Okay. Went off my line a little bit at the end. Let's go back and clean that up. So this is planter wall. It's actually a square planter wall. And it's going to be a three inch high, four and a quarter wide. And this is all finished or fired sides. Okay. So there we have it. Now, can I make your life easier and tell you how big it is? So if you don't want to use a shrink ruler, you can make the exact size planter. Yeah, I'll tell you. So we are mm, five inches and seven eighths. No, six eighths, I would say. So what's that? Three four, three fourths. It's not three fourths. It's one down from that. Five. Your measurement for four and things. Five eighths. Everyone's coming in and saying four and three quarters. Or your four. And a quarter. It should be four and a quarter. Okay. It should be four and one quarter. 
Did I? Four and one quarter is what it should be. Because you got a quarter inch for your wall. You got to you gotta account for the fact that we're five. Oh, no, you're right. It's five inches. And I went, you're right. You all are right. No. No. I did it. You're right. You're absolutely right. You are all right. You guys win. I did it wrong. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's it. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you're absolutely right. It should be four and three quarters, not four and a quarter, because that quarter came. <laughs> you know, thank you, because if I didn't have you all catching me, um, I would have just started cutting clay, and then life would have been very unhappy here, right? But thanks. I'm glad someone spoke up and didn't just think I know everything. I certainly do not. And this is why I am a potter, not a mathematician or a carpenter. <laughs> you got you to gotta get your measurements right for that, too. All right, so our height is good. It's four and three quarters. You all are right. Oh, I hate that. Hate it when I do stuff not right. But <laughs> I don't have to measure. <laughs> I don't have to measure the... Um, three inch height because I'm just going to use my little card that I had before as my guide. Okay, so square planter wall. So four and three quarters, thank you, by five high. This is, this is good. Um, if I was filming this class, I would have realized it eventually and then I would have had to scrap everything and start all over. So, thank you. So how do I keep my craft foam templates excerpt uh, organized? I use plastic like storage drawers. You can get the tall ones that have the skinny drawers so you can keep many of them in there because you don't want them layered too deep. Those are my favorite way to store them. Although I have seen some of our Clay Share members, you guys punch holes and hang them, which I think is brilliant. Okay. Now we've got it. Now we've got it. So, whew, that was nearly a problem. Not really. It would have been fine. But, you know, I've got some clay I rolled out. As I mentioned, you wanted to roll it out and let it set so it's not super floppy. Little floppy, but not super floppy. You hate doing math in public. I know. There's nothing like doing math and then doing math wrong in front of people. Like, you know, a few thousand people watching on the internet, you mess it up. <laughs> I don't care. I, I'm only human. You know, we all make mistakes. I am certainly not perfect. Um, not at all. Nor would I want to be. Because, I don't know. No one's perfect. Okay. Get this. So this is still pretty thick. This was the slab I rolled out that we were going to add texture to. So I feel like it could come down a little bit. We'll just roll it down a little. That should turn it down nicely. I just want to get it to about a quarter of an inch. I like a chunky planter. I don't know what it is, but there's something about a chunky planter I really like. Okay, so we're going to cut the bottom. If you want to put feet on this, you can do that later, like after you make the whole box size. This is also the start if you want to make a square lidded box. So this is the same exact thing. So we're just cutting straight up and down because this is our base. If you had a cookie cutter that was made to the size this is, you know, maybe you don't care about the finished size being five inches. And so maybe you buy yourself a five inch cookie cutter and you just go with that. That would work too. And then you need to get something that's accounts for the quarter inch thickness of your wall. Okay, let me grab a board to work on. Quilting and hand building require math. They do. And I don't really mind the math so much. Not truly. I feel like my edge is a little off here. Yeah, when I was cutting, I let my knife. The craft foam templates because they're made of foam, you, your knife can kind of sway in and out. You know, it can drift. 
So I have found it helpful sometimes when I'm using these to put a straight edge, like this little wooden slat up against it, and then that way you can put your knife right up against the wood and get a great clean cut. No wibbly wobbles at all. None. Math is hard. Oh no. I know. I said it earlier, but then I changed it later. Yeah. My mind got jumbled, apparently. <laughs> so here's one for a side. And I have got, I got clay pieces all over. These are scraps. Uh, one was a big piece. This one was a big piece. But the rest are all scraps from all the projects we've been making over the last few days. And honestly, a planter like this is a great way to use these up. Make sure you all can see. We're going to cut this straight. We are not doing a beveled cut like we did with our mug this morning. We're going to do a straight up and down cut. Now, you will have noticed one thing. Those of you who know me, you will have noticed something missing. I don't know if anybody's picked up on it. I'm going to wait and see if anybody picks up. What didn't I do that I almost always do when I'm hand building? Like, what am I really big on? I don't think even Kevin picked up on it. I actually think most of the questions are probably answered. I'm trying to texture. You got it. Who said that? Soma. Somaya. Somaya. You got it. You got it. Texture. You, you're paying attention. She gets the gold star. Because that's exactly right. No texture on this one. Because uh, I'm going to do something. And someone said that to me the other day. They're like, you, do you always um, carve my wheel thrown pieces? Because I don't carve hand building ones much. Well, I could carve this one. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll carve this piece. I was going to scraffito on a wheel thrown, but maybe I'll scraffito this for the scraffito demo. What? That's right. Maybe. So there's our next wall. I was trying to see if I could get this to work for both these, but it's not going to. I'm going to have to grab this one and take it from this. This slab was the one on the, the bottom, so it's a little softer. Than that one there. I'm going to cut this. The only reason you want them about the same dryness is because they're going to shrink, and if one's already a little drier, it's already started shrinking. So when you join them and you have a wetter side, that wetter side is going to pull away more, so you could get more of a chance of cracking. So you want your clay ideally cut from the same slab. And this one's a tiny bit thick. I'm going to take care of that. Oh, use the flexi bat. Um, could have used the flexi bat for the bottom. That would have been cool, right? Or I could make a little. Oh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll make a little. Take the flexi bat and put my logo on the side. Because my flexi one of my flexi bats has the logo. So do I bevel the edges? No, we're not going to bevel the edges of these. Um, if I was going to bevel my edges, so if I was going to line them up and, and do a bevel cut, I would have made them five inches long. Because then you would have beveled. I didn't. I'm going to do butt joints on this. And I'm going to do a staggered one. So it's like. Um, one will go here, and then here, and then here, and here. So your seam, it'll be a little, it'll be a little different. But if you wanted bevel edges, you would want to go to the five inch size because you'll want to to bevel it. And we'll have to do something. Did I do a beveled side? I don't even know if I've done a class on that yet. All right, there it is. Here's your planner. Enjoy. Now we are gonna put our walls together, and it it goes pretty fast. Once you have your pieces cut out. 
t-shirt idea. Scraffito this. <laughs> Compressed clay. Um, uh, did I? See, I don't even remember. I might not have compressed it because I had compressed it before and then I rolled it thinner. So sometimes I don't compress it again. All right, so we just slipped and scored the base here and now we're going to do our sides. So you want your clay, see how I'm holding it and it's not flopping over. You, this one is wetter. See the difference? Look at how much this one's bending. So this one here is a little drier. And you want them to be about that stiffness so that they could stand up pretty much on their own, right? But not so stiff that you can't adjust them if you need to. So we're slipping and scoring the bottom. And we're going to slip and score here. And then the inside of this one. Right there. This is going to be our outside edge. So that's going to go right here. Now if you're making this with clay and and you realize that your clay is too soft, but you want to make it anyways, you can use support to hold it up. And the other thing we could have done, look at how that side's staying. Look at that. I haven't even I've done nothing, and it's holding itself up. The other thing we could have done is we could have done two five-inch sides and two four-and-a-half-inch sides. But your clay has to be a quarter-inch thick for that to work. If your clay isn't, then it won't fit properly. So now we have decisions. Do we want to put a little coil in here to seal it up? Um, when I'm doing stiff slab work, like this is here, it's ideal to do a coil because it's already stiffened up. It's already started drying. You might want to reinforce it a little bit. So what am I going to today? 2.45. No, 4 o'clock. We're going to 4. I don't know what time. I, so when Clay Share Con happens, I don't leave the studio all day. There's no breaks. It's nonstop for a whole day. So I honestly have no idea what's happening. It could be day 17 of Clay Shark Con for all I know. And then it's like, oh, it's only day two. All right, so we're gonna roll out a bunch of coils and you want them skinny. If you had, <laughs> if you had a really nice hand extruder, like maybe a Shimpo slash Nidec hand extruder or a Kemper one, um, you could just extrude yourself a couple little skinny coils and you wouldn't have to hand roll them. Uh, somebody might have bought herself a new little Shimpo hand extruder. That would be me, yeah. Um, that'd be me, I bought one. And I have to tell you, the best price I found on them was over at Mike's site, which is learnfiredarts.com. He has the best price right now out there on a Shimpo, which is now Nidec, hand extruder. And the hollow die set, I got both because I want, yeah, I want more little extruder dies. Who doesn't? Now, you can go ahead and put this in now or you can wait and do it later. I like to pre-flatten mine. And I got it a little wet too. And then we'll just score it. And this coil will do more than just this section. So make sure that's on camera. We're just going to press it in. I like to do the inside coils as we go. That way you only have to reach down in awkwardly for that last coil. If you all could see, can you see how <laughs> my work surface is a bit of a mess? Now I'm going to, no, don't show them. It's terrible. I'm peeling this back because we're going to put the next wall there and I'll use this coil. We'll keep going. So here's our next piece. Are you showing everybody how messy I am? So I'm scoring this inside edge here because that's going to touch there. The bottom there. And then it's going to have to be the edge, when we think about it, right? This edge here. So I'm going to line these up. This is a butt join. And let me turn it so you can really see how this is. Hey, Kevin is watching videos of me. Can you, you need to mute your stuff. <laughs> what are you doing? You're not supposed to be goofing off and watching other, other clay share videos during this clay share broadcast. You know better. <laughs> he got caught. I'm a professional. <laughs> 
So this is our join right here. See it right there? I'm going to take my rib and I'll just pull up on this side and then I'll pull up on this side to get a nice smooth join. Smooth the top. How does that look? Looks pretty good. And I will smooth this out. You'll barely be able to see that seam. Probably won't be able to see it at all. So we already have um, a diorama <laughs> happening right here, right? So let me go ahead and this is just some slip made with magic water. Um, someone was asking earlier the recipe for magic water. It is on ClayshareResources.com. It's soda ash, sodium silicate, and water. And I use it with my slip because it helps prevent things from cracking. Let me that there. Let's go to our next one. That's our softest one, so we'll use that last. Inside. That's going to join here, bottom, and then this side, because this side right there. Always, always figure it out before you slip and score where it's going. All right, line this up, get it on the. And so you want to make sure that's on the edge there, and it is. Line this up here. Now let's pull up the side. Um, I think I think in my birdhouse class we do stiff slabs. I think that's I think that's the class we did stiff slabs in the birdhouse one. On the circle vase. The slab we did on this. We did use stiff slabs on the circle vase too. Yep, that's right. We did. But the big project I did with. Stiff slabs was that birdhouse because it's a big project. That birdhouse class is a big one. Um, is that two hours? Is that a two-hour long class? Probably longer than that. It it might be longer. Yeah, it's a it's a huge class. Uh, it's it's a lot to make a birdhouse. Now my birdhouses are made of ceramic, um, you know, and if you're going to put them outside for birds to live in, it might not be great because ceramic gets really hot in the sun. I don't want you cooking birds. It's more of a decorative birdhouse. If where you live, it's safe to have a, a birdhouse that is ceramic, meaning it won't get too hot and it can be in a shaded area and you have birds that would like to live in it, then by all means, use it for that. Mine, mine lives inside my birdhouse. All right. Oh, the house luminaries, we did stiff slabs too. Thank you. You guys are so good. All right. Got a little bowing. Let's straighten that out. Square, rectangle, things that have really hard edges like this, you can let your slabs be a little drier because you don't want to bend them. You really want them very straight. So out of all the things you make in pottery, these are the things that the clay can be the driest. All right, so this one, if my measurements in clay are the correct thickness, and I'm as good as 20 years of pottery making makes me think I am, It'll fit perfectly, and it will. So let's go ahead and put that in. This one's the softest of all of them. That's why I saved it for last, because it'll be supported by the other sides. All right, so we're going to join this here, right up against there. My height was good, too. Once this shrinks, it's going to be perfect. I want three of these, maybe five. I want to do a row of them on my windowsill, and I will, we will put feet on them. I might have time to do it today. It's just you don't want to turn them over before they've sat up enough and you get any sagging. All right, let's go ahead and get the outside nice, nice and sharp, pulling up with this rib. Get a nice crisp outside and then smooth it with your sponge. And we will finish that coil on the inside. We just haven't got there yet. But we'll get there. Smooth. It's liquid sodium silicate that I use. Yeah, and the recipe, it's on, it's on the website. I have it. I have my little studio flashcards. You know, we, I did a little quick um, 
Here it is. I did a little quick class on making these. These are great. So magic water. It's a gallon of water, three tablespoons of sodium silicate, and one and a half teaspoon of soda ash. Do you want to go to the front camera and I will show everybody? I'm showing Instagram folks. Um, everybody else? Sorry folks on Instagram, I'm showing it to everyone else. Got it? So everybody watching screenshot magic water or go to clayshareresources.com and you can just print it out. But that's the recipe. There it is, magic water. If you can read my handwriting. And that's why I have studio flashcards because I also have my lid wax recipe in there and kiln wash recipe and the things that, you know, you get, your head only can hold so much information. And over time, you forget, and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I know what the recipe, how come I don't remember what my kiln wash is when I've made it so many times? But sometimes it just falls out of your head. Is there a Clay Share Con discount? Um, we don't have a Clay Share Con discount. He, he's already got sales. He was already doing a big sale, so he didn't add an extra discount. Um, it's the best price. Now, you'll look at his normal price is usually very good, but if you look on the internet, everybody else is selling those hand extruders for like $10 more than he is. The only place that has them the same price is uh, Blick, and they're out of stock. So, and he does free shipping if you spend over $50, which the extruder is, I believe, over 50 I can't remember. I think it was 50, 58 I mean, they're not cheap, but I'm telling you as I'm rolling these coils, <laughs> as, as fun as it is, I wouldn't mind a hand extruder. Not at all. I'm going to flatten these down. Bumped my box. Fix that. So when I was a beginner student, um, I made a lot of stiff slab pieces. I really didn't even know you could make soft slab pots. I had no idea for hand building. I only thought you could do it when they were stiff because I thought you had to build up and they had to su be supported and they would fall over. So I was only doing stiff slab pieces. And it wasn't until um, I took a sculpture class and we were doing other forms and I realized how the material, how clay, is so good for like bending and shaping and who would, who would know? I didn't know that stuff. I didn't know you could do that. But this is how it is when you're starting and it doesn't matter how old you were, how old you are. I was not a, I didn't go to college right out of high school. I joined the military. I didn't, I didn't go back to college until I was already a mom and, you know, I was an older student. So, um, you know, I was old enough to know I didn't know anything. <laughs> All right, so we've got our little coils in here. I want to smooth them out. I'm supporting the outside and I'm using the back end of this wooden clay knife to just smooth it out. And I'm going to smooth up the sides. And I, I don't put coils on the outside. You only need it on the inside. I'm going to smooth these out. This is the basic wooden clay knife that comes in the, like, basic pottery kit that has a needle tool in it and uh, some ribs and sponges and stuff. Why well, I went with the Nidec one over the industrial one he has. So I have in my studio three other extruders. I have a five inch stainless steel extruder, Bailey pottery extruder. I have a four inch um, extruder from Bailey that is not stainless steel. I'm not sure what it's made of, but it's, a, it's another metal because I can't put porcelain in it so it will rust. And then I also have a smaller table mounted extruder from a company that is no longer in business that um, you, know, you put your clay in and you plunge it down. So I do have three other extruders that I use, but the Shimpo is the one that I think will be easiest for my hands to manipulate. I asked him which one would be best and he recommended that one. So for me right now, um, I want something that's easy to use, and I want something that's easy to clean and take care of. A small little extruder like that 
I can just dig out, you know, grab it, put it, put my clay in it, extrude my, whatever I'm extruding, my coils, or I got the hollow die set too. So extrude my forms, and that's it. Four minutes? Really? All right, I gotta finish the coils. No, never mind. Get playing. So the man is trying to give me a heart attack. Tells me four minutes, and I was like, oh, I thought I had plenty of time. I made this a long yeah, demo. No, you bought a small extruder at the craft store with a bunch of dies, but you're intimidated by it, so you haven't <laughs> used it. Um, well, when I get mine, I'll I'll use it, and you'll see how great they are, and you won't have any problems. So, can you leave wet clay in the extruder? If you can keep it wet and no air at all is getting in there, theoretically, yes, but I've never been able to do that. I've never had an extruder that would actually let me leave clay in it. You have to, you have to use it all or it'll be dried next time. I once forgot to clean out my wall, my big four inch, not my five, but my four inch wall extruder. And uh, <laughs> I went to use it a week later. And the extruder, it was full of clay. And I was just like, oh, whoops. And I hope you all are able to see this. Are you in the overhead? I'm in the overhead. Yeah, I hope, I hope I am not moving this around too much. All right, so I got coils on all four corners. I got coils um, up the sides and the corners. I got them on the base. So we're just going to smooth these out. So what is in the porcelain clay? It's not what's in the porcelain clay, I'm sorry. So a stainless steel extruder is, a stainless steel itself is an inert metal, it won't rust. The, um, any wet clay will rust a base metal. So my four inch extruder is a base metal extruder. So what will happen is over the years of using it, a bit of rust builds up, you clean it off, it's not a big deal. You use a porcelain in it, in a base metal extruder, you're gonna get that rust transferred onto your beautiful white porcelain, which you won't want. So the reason I ended up getting the five inch extruder is I had the four inch, I love it. I did want it bigger because I wanted to be able to make mugs with it and bigger forms with it. And I wanted a stainless steel one so I could use porcelain in it. So that's, that's why I got the five inch extruder. So now I've got, I'm gonna, you know, I've got three and a fourth one coming. I've got a lot of extruders. So I have no excuse for not filming more extruder classes, right, everyone? Uh -huh. <laughs> I got a question. Go ahead. Janice wants to know if the, the coils are st for stability, will they also help it dry without warping? Um, yeah, yeah, you think about it as building, um, like, you know, when you're doing building with concrete, they use rebar in the concrete to reinforce it. Yeah, it kind of works like that, too, um, in a way. It will help. They're, they're, I would be surprised if this warps at all. One, because the clay slabs were already drying quite a bit as flat slabs, so they want to stay flat. They don't want to bend. And the other is we put these really great, reinforcement coils. All right, so once you get everything smoothed out, you got some cleanup work to go in and do because it's a little messy down in there. This clay is the Laguna B-Mix 5, which does not have grog. So it makes cleaning up easy because it's a smooth clay. But I would love to see this in a groggy clay. Like I think a planter in a groggy clay would be really nice. So the only thing you'd have to think about is the fact that when I use the sponge on this, the grog would, would get picked up. On this, the grog won't. So let's check our edges. I'm just gonna pull up and make sure my edges are nice. Where that coil was, we just wanna clean up the top there. You're gonna have a slightly rounded inner corner. That's okay. It actually looks really nice. So we're just pulling up on the outside here. And smooth it off. And then use your clay knife to cut this. You suddenly feel like you need to make square things. I know you're you're you and I are feeling the same thing, right? 
I'm feeling squares. It's hip to be square. <laughs> oh, Evelyn, you just got the, the extreme with the hollow dice. Yeah, I think you're going to love it. I think so. And for me, one that works with your hands, all my other extruders are wall extruders, so they're, I can get leverage on that, and it's easy for me to use. But I, I had bought a hand extruder by a no-name brand. He had mentioned they are a bunch of no-name brands out there. And the trigger mechanism was so that I couldn't, I could not at all squeeze it. It was too hard. I mean, this was years ago. This was even before my carpal tunnel got as bad as it is now. So I'm just using a damp finger. And the reason I'm showing you it this way instead of just using the sponge, because if you're using a groggy clay, you need to have something that'll push that grog back down in and your finger does the best job possible. And I built my, <laughs> I built my piece not on the center of my board. And once you lay that first slab down, it's not moving until it's dried up quite a bit. So it's staying on the corner over here, which is a little awkward, but it's all good. The high sodium content in the porcelain will oxidize and the chromium and the aluminum extruders. Yeah, and the wheel head, yeah, and that's, but you know what's really funny is my wheel head on my, my wheel corroded and I didn't even use porcelain. The B, it wasn't even B-mix, I was using a regular stoneware, cone 10 stoneware did it. So, I mean, just having it wet will cause those metals to corrode if it's a base metal. So a stainless steel extruder can have, will have no problems. But I'm assuming porcelain's probably a little more corrosive them the more than the other clays you love your grog you use a damp small paintbrush to smooth it yeah that'll work and also mud tools the company that makes the rib i'm using right now makes a white sponge that if you want a sponge that's the best one to use for that groggy clay all right so we're basically done the only thing left for me to do is a little housekeeping. You know, I'm going back and I'm showing you these corners, you get really sharp, nice sharp corners. You might be like, well, no, I don't want sharp. Okay, take your sponge, pull up, and then just slightly soften that corner. I actually like, I like it a little softer better. It's still a square, but it's not a razor sharp edge. So we'll just pull up and then rub with our finger. And maybe I'll scraffito this piece and carve it. But look how great this is for a planter. Um, I can see this carved. I can see this with underglaze transfers that we just did. You put them on now. You wouldn't put the underglaze transfer on before you built it. You would build this first, then put the underglaze transfer on. Like right now would be the time. If your seam is showing and you want to hide it, do you see I'm just using my finger to rub up and down? Just rubbing up and down, just blending that seam in. I'm just using the flat, you can actually see. And I'm not really going straight up and down, I'm kind of you know doing a little circle. But you see right here where I'm rubbing? And now we're gonna get the top edge. We'll smooth this all out. And that's our planter. Now, if you want a foot on this planter, which I, yeah, you know, you have to think about what kind of plants you're gonna put in here. If you're worried about drainage, which some plants need really good drainage, you'll need to put a foot on here. So what you wanna do is let this set up a little bit more than it is right now. The top, see these walls are still a little soft. I want them to sit up just a bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll turn the whole thing over and then I will use my foot maker and I'll just put a foot all the way around the edge and then I'll cut some notches in the front and sides, like all the way around and a drain hole in the middle. But it's gotta sit for a little while before we can do that. So that'll be a little thing. Maybe I'll do a separate video showing how to do the next step. So let's see what we got for questions. So you have a Scott, Scott Creek hand extruder and you never used it. You're intimidated. Oh no, well hopefully, um, I'll, I'll show you. We'll do it together. You won't be intimidated. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go to the front. I mean, I'm just going to smooth this out and answer all the questions. So I see there's a question about making holes. Yes. 
So how do I get rid of the sandy surface? So you can use your finger to rub it down or that white mud tool sponge. Um, here's one. Let me grab it. So this sponge right here, it's made by mud tools. So we're at the front. It's dirty because I use it for groggy clay. <laughs> and it's stiff right now because you've got to hydrate them. When you get them the first time, they're as thin as paper. You don't even know it's a sponge. You think it's a piece of paper. So you just sit it in water and it will expand, right? It'll absorb the water, it'll expand. And since this one's already been hydrated once, it rehydrates really quickly. And so I'm just squeezing it out a bit. And now you can see how flexible it is. But this material right here, it's almost like a suede material. And you can use these I mean, I could use this instead of this. Uh, it's just, these are very, very inexpensive, and I tend to lose sponges. Um, I don't want to lose these. They're, they're, I don't know how much they are, honestly. I, I don't keep track of prices. When I need something for the studio, it's a business expense, and I obviously need a sponge, so I, I buy it. But they're maybe $4, I would say. So $4 versus $0.76, cents, right? Um, if you lose at least a sponge a week, you're going to get annoyed at, you know, <laughs> spending $4 every week. Plus, my local clay supplier has these always. I have to order these online. You have five of the white ones, and you love them. Yeah, and they make a fizzy sound when you put them in water. Yes. So will I make a tray for drainage? Yeah, um, and actually, so that, that leads me to the next question, right? So we're going to put feet on it, and I'm going to put holes in it for drainage, right? Probably maybe three holes in the bottom, right? I could just do one. But it's going to drain directly out onto my windowsill, which would not make me happy, right? No one would enjoy that. Not me, not the counter. Cat might enjoy it, but, you know. So I'll make a tray to go under it. And that leads us to the question of, well, if I want three of these, do I want to make a tray big enough for all three to sit in, right? And then I have to worry about the size of that windowsill. I made this to fit in the windowsill. So that tray could be mm, a little bigger, right? It has to be a little bigger. So I have to decide, do I make a tray for each one or do I make a big, long tray? I'm probably just going to make a tray for each one. Uh, GR Pottery Forms has great square forms. I bet you that I have a square form in my studio that I could go use and make a tray that will sit under it and catch, which is probably what I'll do. So I have three of them in their own little planter in a row on the windowsill. And when they're all done and up, I will share a picture so y'all can see it. So you just ordered the larger extruder that Michael used, the dies. So you didn't, you didn't, make, the, um, you didn't make a mistake, Mary. Michael has a Kemper extruder and he has a Shimpo. The Kemper is longer and will hold more clay. Um, he told me the Shimpo is a little easier to squeeze because it holds less clay. The Nidec holds less clay. So that by, you know, just the fact that you have less material trying to squeeze up through that tube, it'll be easier to work with. And the way my hands are currently, I really don't want to go with anything. Yes, I'm having surgery soon. A week from today, as a matter of fact, but that's only one hand, and I still have my other hand, and I have recovery. So, if it turns out that I need a bigger extruder down the line, I'll get another one. But I don't think you made a mistake. I think you'll be happy with it. Scott Creek makes a hand extruder, and their two-inch dies work with others. Oh, good! I do have some Scott Creek dies for my five-inch extruder. I've bought them so that I could <laughs> get more die options. You can make your own dies. Sometimes they have some great dyes out there and you don't want to make your own. You can just buy them. All right, so this is done. The only other thing I might do is decide if I want to bevel undercut here, which I think I do. So I'm just going to draw a line, basically just cutting away a little bit down here at the bottom with my wooden clay knife. And then we'll just smooth it out. Seal it up good. Yeah, so I'll probably do that all the way around for the bottom. 
I think that I do have a sharper wooden clay knife, but it, this one's working great. So do you see I'm pulling this way first, and then I turn it up on its edge and pull it. So the first pull takes away most of the material, so I get a nice straight line. And this side, I just want to get that fine little bit that's left over. Do you have any questions for me? What's the difference between the white and blue Dirty Girl sponges? Oh, I don't, I don't have the Dirty Girl sponges. I'll have to look into that for you, Diana. I don't know that. White sponge on Amazon is $10. $10? That's crazy. That's too much. Don't buy it. $10 is, that's not how much it is. Someone else. Um, a tray hidden under feet. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Linda, that's a great idea. You can make a little tray that's hidden. It fits inside. The feet are tall enough. The tray sits under. And that's brilliant. Um, I actually have a planter in the studio that it sits tall, and I have just a little dish under there, just a little plate, because I didn't have a bigger one to go with it. But that might be the way. Um, one tray is very popular in home decor. It's true. I feel with a giant, well, uh, these are going to be five inches. I could do one. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Who knows, right? Um, so do I cut out after I built it? I missed, I missed the question. It was on Facebook. Best place to buy a slab roller. I got mine from Bailey Pottery. I got it on sale, just their normal sale that they were having. So the sponge I'm using also comes in blue, and it's a little different stiffness. So this is a mud tool sponge made by Cheryl Mud Tools. And they do have a white one. Uh, the blue one I don't think is fine. It's probably not as good for smoothing out surfaces. Clayscapes, it's seven. Okay, seven dollars when you bought it. But you do love it. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Yes, I love this too, but if it's seven to ten dollars and I lose it, this is 76 cents or something. I'm gonna lose them. I, I've got one right now of these. I don't know how many others I have. The little square planters in one rectangular tray would be so cute. You're right. You're right. Little ones would be super cute. Little ones, little babies. So now you know how to make this. You know how to use a shrink ruler. You know how to make your make a shrink rule. So you can use your shrink ruler. We're going to be giving away some of these later. And I showed you how to make a template. So you can make templates yourself. Right here is the planner template. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And here's the finished planter, which will shrink down to five inches when it is all said and done. Or at least that's what my shrink ruler tells me. No, it will. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this planner and hope you learned something and you try it out yourself. Uh, I will put feet on it and I'll have to do a little video and put that up, putting the feet on the planter so you can see how to do it. Probably won't put the feet on until either later today or I'll cover it with plastic and do it first thing in the morning. So next we have a tutorial with Sharon Hoppy. She's gonna be making deep flowers. This tutorial was supposed to happen yesterday, but we had a little glitch. And so we were able to reschedule Garrity Tools to, I think, Saturday and do Sharon today. And then after that at 5.30, we have the giveaways, which today we're giving away clay skates pottery glazes, some GR pottery form rim templates, Sandbow Studios underglaze decals, Overglaze decals today. Okay, today's overglaze decals. MKM pottery tools, some De La Design gift certificates, speedball underglazes. Uh, Sharon Hoppy has a gift certificate. Diamond core tools. We got the two shrink rulers. Play in the mud pottery apron. Ah, oh, you can win a pottery apron. You get to pick the one you win. And a clay share T-shirt and a Woodworks by Rich rack. You guys didn't even see. We'll we'll have to show during the giveaway. I'll scooch over here, and you all can see. The rolling pin rack because it's spectacular. All right, I will see you all in about 15 minutes to introduce Sharon, and then I'll be back at 5:30. See y'all later.